episode two. Three and four. Because if you're watching this, you liked it. Yeah, we didn't know if whether you guys were gonna be into this, seeing us review documentaries and commentate on top of them and this type of stuff. But obviously, if you're seeing this video, it means you chose your future, and they, all of you showed a lot of love and support and wanted to see the rest of this. So we thought we binged watched uh, the whole thing. Obviously, I am speaking in the future now. It was fairly requested, which is quite impressive. This is the beginning where now we get to see Aditya Chopra for the first time, uh -huh. Mr. Shy Boy. Mr. Mr. Hybe from the cameras. Correct, correct. <laughs> Mr. Cajol is chasing after him and making fun of him for being an introvert. He's right now limping out the door. Hey, put some respect on the introverts. If you want to watch the full uncut version with the whole music reviews, you can do so at Feature Friday Movie Club by becoming a member of the channel. You get the full movie review, the full music review, uncut, with no interruptions. All you need is your own copy of the movie, sync it up to our timer, and let's get ready to party. Tell me about when you first met Adi. They call him Adi. He was a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what a genius, crazy, obsessive mind he was. He wanted to create his own empire. Okay. So, uh, yeah, where do I begin? Nice. Ooh. Nice, nice. I mean, it's going to be very interesting because people mentioned that the second episode is all about DDLJ. I think it's going to be very curious to see sort of his input on things. I think it began before I even knew it, actually. He looks identical to his father. I was very yeah, clear, very, similar to very early in my life, that this is what I'm going to do. I'm telling you, that's, that's what I think the West End and Broadway want it to be in the big commercial screen. I actually okay. thought okay. everybody makes films because I <laughs> makes Yeah, sense. makes sense. I only met film people. And Indians as people mm. are People who constantly aspire to be more than who they are. Dreamers. Like today is Friday. After this interview, I'm seeing a film. If you have the opportunity oh. to sit with them, <laughs> Very nice. you will know where they laugh, where they cry, where they got up, where they yes. booed. There's no better learning than that, you know? I agree. I, I like this guy. Young Salman. My first... Uh, Salmanito. Clearly, many PR ki screening ho thi hamari. Directed. That time I did not know Yashi ke ladke hai. I just clearly remember him. My second film, Hum Aapke Hain. That's the one that yeah. people want us to watch. And that show was a disaster. He saw the picture at Liberty. And he told me, Suraj, it's a, it's a damn good film. And he said, ki ye dhai gaane kaato ke to nikal jayegi. And he pin, pinpointed exactly the My two God, and a half songs. My God, he was 17. That is a two first half memory I have. Wow. The greatness of Adit Chopra. In the 90s, the mood was about aspiration. The this mega corporations about moved in. Looking westward. The economic policy changes brought about mm. by our government, we shall make the future happen. Super wow. interesting part because this is the part where we're the most totally. ignorant of. If the speed was going slowly, 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 zoom, suddenly during those five, seven years, everything. It's just suddenly like Everything. sped up at a much, ah, much faster rate. Right. Okay. So that's what the rise of cinema also, also became. happened. Women start to come out into the workforce and this whole cultural churning uh -huh. of what is an Indian. And I think we were mm. looking for ideas. We were looking right, for so the films identity. became even more important in the identity right. of yes, yeah, yes, yes. the common person. I was not watching anything Indian. I was watching a lot of Hollywood movies. Indian. I was actually listening watching to Hollywood. only English music. I used to have a huge draw of, you know, English scenes. Nice, I wonder what they were. New Spring Scheme, okay. Wham. Wham, a <laughs> year. That's, that's I pretty. I just picked up all my CDs and I threw them away. And I put some f***ing Kishore Kumar. And I bought just whichever were the latest films coming, saying, you know what, I'm going to induct myself into English. Also notice how he's in, in introduction into becoming more aligned with his own culture is through music. <laughs> Love I was a, a complete proper, you know, AD where I literally did from the first frame to the last, you know. The, a boy falls in love with the girl, she's elder to him. So it's a story of very young love. One fine morning, he comes to know that girl named Pallavi, and she left a small daughter. Look at those eyes. Photocopy replica. It's just a photocopy. Her brother. Mm -hmm. She falls in love with this man. Oh, 
Okay, very this good, is good story plot. Yeah. <laughs> that don't make it this one drama in this country. Perhaps too complex. Aditya told me that this is a dangerous film. Why don't you change the end? Mm. I said, I have made the huh? film only for the end. I love you, Pooja. I believe. Yeah, but I can see how this could be a little controversial. But in love, there's no question of age. Audience accepted about 16,000 feet of the film. Last 500 Except feet. Except the ending. They didn't like this. Kuvar ji aaye hai? Ji aaye. I had sat with uh, Adi once and Adi had told me that he thinks there was one scene in Lamhe you see the daughter when she's young and that completely throws you off and you can never see her as a mature woman in love. Yeah, it's a it's a very delicate premise, premise to yes, work I'm, with. It used to affect all of us. No shit. It's not so much the monetary love. It's <laughs> the identity. It's like you feel a little naked. You feel, you feel oh, okay, if I go on the screen, exposed. People, I'm hating this movie, so they're going to stone you. When a film doesn't right. do well, right. athletes go through that a lot, so a lot much as well. Of yourself in it. Obviously, this was the first That's why he lost his I hair. So much of Stress. myself in it. And you realize that you're completely a slave to the audience. Absolutely. Yeah. But this, this is the curse of being an artist, though. What's on screen? Does it make sense to them? And they're gonna judge you for that. The market sets the demand always. After Shri Devi, he was the I'm just me stepping in. And how am I to match up this performance? That performance. He had a look though as well for cast, didn't he? Definitely. Big eyes. Well, he already knew what worked, especially with Shri Devi. I'm Abhi Manu Rai. You can call me Abhi. Call me Abhi. This is Peter. Call him idiot. <laughs> I don't have the conventional he's, he's looks. He's so to be natural. He's so star. fabulous. I don't have a conventional. Yeah. Backing to be a film star. I have not done conventional roles Backing. to become a film star. There must be something Correct. beyond all this, which I would like to believe is uh, a lot of and hard work. And that's the trick, the buddy. W what he said was that I think you're a great actor. This is a bad guy role. I really think this is a damn good role, and you should do it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, okay. Right? Gives him range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the role that really, literally puts him in the market. And Different types of performances, different type of scenes you would like to do. Unless simple, he's satisfied, or the director's satisfied, he doesn't, he doesn't give up. That did very well. People loved it. There were people writing on their nice. chest with knives, the names well, of the well, girls they love. And it just became Honestly. quite a phenomenon. So Adi cut the trailer for Dar. At that time, nobody made trailers for films. Okay. Ah, I see, so he was one of the first ones to make trailers. You know, and, and it was all done to that very dramatic music. With a, with a Spanish guitar. And I think Dar was really where he found his voice. Right. And that trailer... It was the beginning of it all. Adi, the trailer was better than the movie. <laughs> oh my God. That's f <laughs> That's actually so f to say. Dad's vision was very simple. Oh. And as long as he was getting to make the films with somebody else's money, he was happy to share profit and make less if he has to. Yeah, because it's about the art. Yeah. Come on, this is about the passion, the sacrifice of your own art. So I remember when my father told me, like, you know, you're ready to direct. I said, Dad, I'll direct the day you are able to put 100% money into the film. She said, no, I, I, I just don't want anybody else to own anything I create. Clever. Because just imagine sharing 50% of DDLJ's revenues. I don't think we'd be where we are today. Because that film, son. Oh my God. Yeah, Longest running film in the history of Indian cinema. <laughs> Suraj, please. Jara Adi ko samjhao teri baat sunega. He listens to you. So. Well, poor oh, he wrote it all himself. Rata, rata, rata. 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 Film mein banai hai. Aisa kya hota hai? Aisa kya <laughs> what is this obsession? <laughs> I remember that it was a three hour narration. And Yashji looked Anupan at me. Anupankar. With an expression. I didn't connect to Simran at all, to be very honest. <laughs> That's crazy for Kajal to say. He had a very lukewarm response from uh, from all the right. all the writers, and he had to relook really at the script. Ask himself whether he was right. So even though he got a lukewarm response, he said, "I have to make this film because I believe in it so much." Fair enough. Wow. And that's the dad influence in there, you know. We were all sitting, and he said to us that he's going next day to meet Shah Rukh, and he says, "What if Shah Rukh doesn't say yes to the movie?" He will. Movie. He will. This guy's hit it right off the bat. They hit a home run. Um, you you call me to cast me in a film called Dar. Doing action and I'm running. Yeah, yeah, now he's gonna get. And and he's like out here. So really. that's why the oh, ending yeah. of DDOJ is the way it is, I feel. It makes sense. I was looking for a very unpredictable romantic hero. And they nailed it. I felt he that Shah Rukh it. is the Darang Bazigar guy who can throw a girl off the roof. He's a little, you know, edgy. When we talk, we only talk action, action films. films. You know, we talk like this and this action film with blood coming out. Yeah, I understand why yeah, yeah, things yeah. turned out the way they did. They narrated this really sense, sweet Nambi Bambi film to me about. 
<laughs> Nambi, loves, Nambi film. <laughs> doesn't even run away with the girl. And he used to always say this, your eyes have something that are Can cannot be just wasted on action. I he was wise. Agree. But now that he makes sense, why he has so much depth in a lot of his other characters. You know, I never thought I could sing a song, you know, romantically. Yeah. So I have no understanding why I'm a romantic hero. Oh, that's so that interesting for awesome. him. You might choose not to do this, which I think is completely, you know, it's fine. But I would just advise you that don't shut your doors on never doing a love story. Smart man. Well, country, look what it, it a turned out to be. will only be that person who will be every mother's son, right. every sister's brother. Every college girl's fantasy. This mother is smart. So clever, such a clever guy. I hate being woken up by my father in the morning. My father calls and says, "It's your dad." And honestly, I wasn't a good assistant. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> so the first time when I hear like, "What is he? Why, why does he want me?" Uday was like really cool, and he knew culture. Western culture well. Right. Oh, I want a Harley Davidson jacket. Uday will know what I want. I don't have to get it myself. Yeah. Correct. Correct. I want Char to have this like kind, kind of look cool, cool, like you know, grease vibe. vibe but he... Exactly. He would know. And he's like, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I, and you're. I think I even wore that jacket <laughs> and brought it to India while wearing. No it. way. It was so huge, I couldn't fit it into my suitcase. Nine hits, click snaps, my England click snaps with nobody, dude. Got that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the Nickelodeon? While I was discussing the story idea, he used to really react very interestingly, sometimes can be very good. I guess we didn't notice that. Before. No, I had no idea. Sorry, it's closing time. And I remember telling him that, you know, Karan, you need to be in films. You're, you're choosing a wrong profession. Also, di director of brand new d direction of films as well. Dude, this Aditya guy is smart as hell. Bro, has so much foresight. Mate, you nail that f shot, I'll tell you phenomenal. that much. Phenomenal. The most iconic moment in cinema. I remember we were shooting and Adi decided that he must break the Yash Chopra stereotype Whoa. and give Kajal a silk Six, sari. Seven. And I kept watching a very distressed Yash Chopra. Oh, this fabric lesson. will not fly. And if it doesn't fly, it will not be beautiful. beautiful. The, their style of shooting is very different. They're, uh, belief in how a scene should be constructed is very different. Yeah, yeah. I think he was also more given on set in comparison to his father. He didn't care about money that much, mate. Exactly. That would take a bunch of stress off and more hands on. But if Yeshi, you told Yeshi, I'll do one more. I forgot that line. I didn't miss it. Must not be important. Uh -huh. The you greatest see, more forgiven, difference more between open. the two yeah. is whenever you come to Yash Uncle's set, he'd stop what he was doing, get up and come meet you and talk to right. you. And I went on the first day, I walked <laughs> and I saw Adi and I was expecting, oh, welcome this. And he said, why have you come? <laughs> Why are you here? I was like, okay, <laughs> sorry, I'll leave. Yeah, because uh, you can see the focus and the, the passion for this specific film as well. He's neurotic. Yeah, I would yeah, presume yeah, he's yeah. quite high in neuroticism. You can make that out in the nervous movements of his fingers on his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, really tough. Now. Leave him alone, he's a genius. He has a smile, he has a smile. Because he's so consumed by what he oh, does. Oh yeah, yeah, very his, much. His directional That's notes I mean. are just brilliant. And I must tell you, that last action scene, has been forced by me in the film. I oh, bet. Yeah, we, we feel <laughs> that now. And I went now. to yes, and I went please, to Please, let me be I an said, action star. Please. One action scene in this film. Yeah, I, I knew it from the beginning. That's... Yes, please. Throw it out. Let me just throw it out there. He loved me so much. He said, you're one hour. <laughs> they oh my kept God, it. They choreographed it in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> knew it from the beginning since he started talking about it. That's why there's specific mistakes in that shot. And... He made me into a lover boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he made, made you into a success. Into a billionaire. He made you into a success. Oh, mate, got Love a goosebumps that. watching that intro again. Actually, I want to watch this film again. Knowing everything that I know. Yeah, I'm down. He's you know a rugby funny? player. You know what's funny? Now knowing how casual is off camera and seeing this character. My she can like, act. It's like the range on this woman. <laughs> and by golly, I was Look at that top, man. <laughs> you know? Woohoo! I remember I saw that film probably 20 times in the theater. Dude, what the f? It influenced the way I spoke to a girl, it influenced how I was with my parents. Raj was everything. Yeah, Raj is the shit, not gonna lie. Raj could do anything. Uh, he was naughty. He was charming. But he charming. was a good guy like, and a good up, son. Like, and... I want to be this guy. Uh, Bohat. Bohat. <laughs> As a girl, you want to have that iconic trip with your friends yes. where you meet your Raj. <laughs> so... yeah, I'll meet you it's any day. Yeah. I forgot the heck. Fuck, it was amazing. <laughs> I love it. Like, feeling is still alive. Oh, that was very genuine. Yeah. <laughs> he all 
almost freaking swooped her up. This scene was so good. And that kind of always bothered me. I came from a very secure uh, yeah, upbringing. Yeah, yeah. You mean you're never going to meet your parents? You're never going to talk yeah. to them? Yeah. If I was in the love with a girl, awesome, right? and of course, of course. the girl's father doesn't like me, I will win him over, you know? But I would not take her away from him. Yeah. That mm -hmm. will hurt everyone. It will hurt him. It will hurt her Also, mother. Indian cinema her. seems to be very intertwined with art is art, right? But mm -hmm. also, they they instill, like the values they want to instill in them because they know people reenact or become these sort of characters. They're very aware of that, culturally. Yeah. Which you don't really it... see that in Hollywood or in other productions. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly he opened the film up to not just the youngsters, but, but the also families. to the families. Big correct, market. Correct. And it began a new era. Please. Yeah, this moment was ja, everything. Simran, ja. Ja, Simran, Go live your sindegi. Ja, I was so emotional. Ja. <laughs> I love it. So Gishu. were we. <laughs> oh, I was kind of mind by incredible. the action scene, but. Oh yeah, that was so out of place. But this, this moment. I actually that was the ultimate, uh, what do they call in Hollywood, that four quadrant film where it's <laughs> male, female, older, younger, urban, rural, everyone. Uh, rural. everybody, yeah. Yep. But it is so wonderful. In a new bottle. In a new bottle. Yeah, that's perfectly the said. <laughs> well done, mate. You should be an actor. You speak beautifully. It was a very youth-oriented love story. Mm -hmm. You know, normal love stories are Romeo and Juliet, where you go against the system, against the family. And... West Side Story. And we did all that also. <laughs> it's true, it's but true. But you know what I love about in traditional the, values. The, this film was the family values, the, the, the priority of bringing forward those core essence of, of each character, you know? Agreed. Doesn't actually realize how much I love Bollywood. She was My a YouTuber, wasn't she? My almost embedded with that of Bollywood Or Vina, what the f*** was she? I don't, I don't know who she is. I, I find her so unfunny though. Ah. She, she went on to stand up and she sucks. You see two people that really want to be together, that are fighting for something they believe in. Like, most of my life story is one where I wanted to do something, I wasn't allowed... Quite relatable, is that, eh? I really see... The approval of my approval parents, of my yeah. parents. And that's why the ending of DDLJ meant so much to me. Of course! We're going to fight for this approval that deep down is so embedded within us, and that's... I don't yeah. even think I like this chick, but she's speaking pure facts! Fact, fact! You know the stereotype of, like, women aren't funny? She plays to that though. I'm funny. Yeah, you are. There's plenty of funny women. <laughs> she ain't one of them. <laughs> it really pisses me off. I'm telling you, the music supervisor here, they went nuts and I'm in love with them. Mate. That's a sea of people. Oh, look at that. So show us my houseful here in the theaters. Are you excited or... Can't see our feeling from our face. We feel on the top of the world. Continuously running. My God, 300 weeks. Also, it has music. It's comedy, comedic. What the f... Bude, bude. They show me. Hey, yo. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I go... At least 200 to 300 phones. Who told you who are you to, to remove, remove this movie? And then we are... kept on running. <laughs> oh, nice. A thousand. A thousand weeks though. That's two. Kajol. Ha ha. If you've seen this, look at him in his award leather. shows. <laughs> Did they feel different back then? Probably. Look at that. Yeah, it was a great night. He at that time, Giri Ajay won 10 awards. Fucking hell. The you know, he looks the same. Till then. I'd like to thank my parents. Got be, I don't know if this will ever come again. Oh. <laughs> it will, mate. But that was the last guy. And I kind of told myself, I'm done with this. Did he never get another award? At the end of the day, there are 10 people who are taking this decision. Oh. Yeah, of course. I don't want to get caught up in this, hey, how many awards do I have? Yeah, and yeah. Next year, will I win? How do I make sure I win? Of course. Because you're playing to the industry, not. I just want to make the best films I can, and I want to be away Those from... peripherals, yeah. All the other peripherals. I think somebody has surpassed his father. Well, they things. became... If they were rich before, they were... the legacy to another level, right? Like, it's, it's very rare that somebody... Achieves that. And he's done it he's on his own terms. He has practically, you know, shaped the contours of, of our industry. Ritik Roshan's accentuates words yeah, his so peculiarly. Is, is in really funny places. And Yash asked Adi, he said, Adi, I want to give you a present. Oh. You please tell me what you want. He said, Dad, I want a studio of our own. And he was like, say no more. He said, yes, we will do that. Nice. My son, Bita, say no more. 
He you want a studio? Give you ten. <laughs> he, he looked. He looked at his uh, his son the same way Amita Bachan looks at Abhishek Bachan. <laughs> yes, Bita. No Whatever problem. You want, I'll He's, have you. you have I have a, you in my wall. Va va. Va va. Put a picture of him. <laughs> There's a couple of big takeaways. One is definitely the fact that in movies, um, especially in Indian cinema, from the Chopra family, they do have a big sort of a, a conundrum or a big a goal of portraying values that are good. Well, and I think it's and it comes from that aspect. It comes from Yash being the the beginning of bringing something to a strive for is something that's brighter something that you dream about he saw the partition he saw right. the wars right. he saw the conflict he wants to instill things that are somewhat patriotic that believe in the country good families well, he good knew, values he knew from the beginning the absolute influence that media had on the common person so they they really wanted to exploit that and i think Addy really grew from some of those values into something new yet he wanted to modernize them he wanted to package them in a way that would be more you know would appeal a bigger audience but yet still promote somewhat fairly conservative traditional values and they obviously managed to do both things both through storytelling and in music it's really interesting when you look at art from that perspective because we've never sort of looked at art in that perspective and Bal is working on her own projects at the moment where we're producing our own things and it's like uh, we've never looked at it from that perspective of what value are we instilling into this mm -hmm. we've looked at it more similar to how Adi becomes later in his life after DDLJ which is I don't want to get caught up in in will this get the approval of the industry will this be good bad I just want to make the best possible films that I possibly can um, I think I think it also not that we're making a fucking <laughs> Movie, relax. What the heck, no. But it, it is more about, I think, with Addy, what, what, we, what we're seeing. I think we should call him Aditi. I don't think Aditi. we're close to him to call him Addy. <laughs> That's a good point. Mr. Lord Mr. and Savior Aditi Chopra. Chopra. Uh, listen, I just think Aditi, he's got such a brilliant perspective, and uh, he had a really refreshing perspective on some of the really uh, perhaps dated values that the Jew, the youth might have not prioritized, right? So, and he installed them. Instilled them. Instilled them into the film in a, in a way that was so accessible for so many people. I do wonder, I do wonder what... I wonder uh, what his criticisms were. And yeah, what, how can you... Be, because this is a debut film, right? This is how you're being... No, I mean, yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. This is all his. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's just funny because like... I guess it would be his debut, but he bro was so involved as an assistant director before that it's like, Correct. well, is this really your first movie? But it is because it's his first, it's his first um, credit. Correct, correct. Uh, as, as a director, a, as a director, not AD, yeah. and writer. Yeah. So, so this is this is a huge statement. But most importantly, that script is a hundred percent his, right? So mental. Completely. So um, I wonder. Do, I do wonder what coming from such a high, from such a, a, an incredibly well received film, what could potentially create even more hunger in you right. right what what would be your new goal if you don't want the the extrinsic situations to to dictate how you were going to feel about the art that you were making i wonder then what were the new goals the new values that he was uh, striving for <laughs> My father was a producer. I belong to a film family. Okay. I grew up on film sets. Both my parents are actors. I'm doing a show for Netflix, which is, uh, and both my son and daughter are in there. My brother is an actor, and he's not a very successful actor. Only an audience will decide, I like this person, I want to see this person. It's not for everybody. Yeah, the market says the demand. Ah, uh, yes and no. Don't get it twisted i did well, yeah, yeah come on know, son we know, <laughs> we know for a fact nowadays that with great marketing anything anyone can I, be i understand star. what you're saying because the whole premise actually applies the market does set the damn demand you're the one in power no, however i uh, also like his his argument because it dictates that if you really do not have the innate talent it's very difficult to make you into something it's just the barrier of entry is way easier when you are you are an insider in the industry and you do have resources so you actually have way more of a shot and the probability is way higher it's just you are playing the market you can't right, win every single okay? time at the end of the day it doesn't matter what the industry says. Yeah, yeah, but this is, that argument this is, is fairly uh, weak. I, I, I can live with this. A lot. 
we grew up very privileged. We grew up in the industry in South America. It's like uh, we see this stuff happen firsthand. So it's like I was like a they call bhola, like very like innocent. <laughs> no shit, bro. I could tell. <laughs> Jet hands. I created my own country in my head. It's called Anchor. You know, this this immigrant from Greece, and then there's this dictator. And it was like a democratic monarchy. It's very artistic. For some friend. reason, I don't know. It just stuck. Fair enough, bro. Fair enough, bro. <laughs> I was very interested in acting and I was always performing in schools. In my mind, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I knew that I, you had to look a certain way, you had a certain height and a certain hair. A certain it depends on the roles you want to get. Know, you know, persona, I, I knew I didn't have that. Also, if you're looking yourself and comparing yourself to Ritik, you're cooked. D difficult. <laughs> yeah. That's the time I was writing Mohapathe. We haven't I seen this This yet. was my next film after Dilwale, so it was a big thing. Mohapathe will come soon. Camera. I want to see if you're really good in front good. of the camera because if good you're not, headshot. then good headshot, Mike. Yeah. Come on! And he got jacked. Yeah, I bet he got a lot of girls from here. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to this. Also, everyone criticizing the films sometimes we like from the from Bollywood are like cringe. Bro, we grew up watching telenovelas, man. Like, look up telenovelas, dramatic copulations on YouTube. Yeah, I look forward to reviewing this. It's, I think, my second or third day when I had to face Mr. Butcher. Mm. <sighs> and there's a shot in Mob thing where I'm coming late and he catches me. And I didn't sleep that night. I was like so nervous. And he gives it all. Like he's there, he's present. Yeah, that must be so intimidating. <laughs> well, yeah, I look forward to this <laughs> film. Not gonna lie, I'm down. To the My reaction when I first heard the script was absolutely spellbinding. Mm. And to then be sitting in Sold. front of <laughs> and listening to a narration Literally. to absolute perfection. Mate, uh, you should've gotten a meetup to narrate <laughs> fucking doc. That was really like validation. Like, oh, you know what? I could do this. Maybe I have a career here or something that I, I could pursue a dream that not many people get, you know. But what the f happened? Now, if I do not take this head start and make something out of it, I would actually I like not Aditya. be doing justice. To That's the right children. mentality correct, in nepotism, correct. correct. Or like when your family is successful. Like honestly, I didn't have any uh, learning. It was just instinct. So my logic was simple that if we are a production house and we now know how to produce films. Let's do more than that. Let's do more of that. Makes yep. sense. Yep. And let's see where it takes me as a producer. Right. I remember Mutse Dosti Karoge was a very Which important say? film. Dosti I believe that film is very important in my career as a producer. Okay. okay. Because that's the film I didn't want to make. The idea was to launch new directors with new voices. The story is a simple story about a guy falling in love with the soul of a girl, but mistaking that soul for somebody else. And the love triangles begin. Illuminati! I always react to any story oh, or any material you, as an audience first. And as an audience, I felt, I'm not sure I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Mm. I think Karak made Edil Hemushakil part one. Brother! <laughs> because I think audiences have moved away from these triangles where which girl will the guy go to? Current Jigger can Kuch Kuch Kota. I said, no, where How many fucking more? Most? The film was a really big film, and the film didn't do it. Ah. It was the best thing that could have happened to me. <laughs> but let me try and do the next slate a little more hands on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first slate of films which carried my name as a producer, what? and it was Hamtum, Doom, and, and Visa. Oh my god, this guy's a god! Hamtum is a much younger film. It's a film released in 2004. Safli Khan is very evidently metrosexual, a word that was uh, everywhere, everywhere that, that year. What does that yeah. mean again? Yeah. Metrosexual, that he, he took care of his image instead of that macho look. He was more into like fashion and like fresher and... Metrosexual? Yeah. Pro got the subway. And I need a kind of actor speak who to the would urban. speak to a more urban audience. Yeah. So he was ahead of the curve. Definitely. You see the hairstyles, the accessories. Yeah. Probably had the Justin Bieber hairstyle before Justin Bieber. Mate, it's so strange. fucking hell, Rani he Mukherjee is the shit. Film, which strangely was called Dulhan, which means bride. And that film never got made. But I landed up being his bride after many years later. <laughs> Imagine that. Were they together? No. Who did Rani get married with? Okay, that's it. Woohoo! And I stopped doing films for about eight months oh. because I realized that I wasn't getting the roles that I wanted to do. Blah! I wanted to be the actor who talks about the modern Indian woman. Rani Mukherjee. Mukherjee. Okay. There were three pillars of Hindi films like everybody used to say, like you, you can't do without, okay. which is drama, emotion, 
romance. And nowadays, I reaction. I'm, right? I'm gonna remove these three pillars and see what happens. Merge them all together, doom. I wanted to make a film where I want you to combine Manmohan Desai and Michael Bay. Oh, okay, fair enough. That's exactly what he got. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's exactly what he got. The truth is that, you know, I was never a big fan of romantic okay, he's a personality. Films. When I met Adi, that was... But I love bikes, by the way. I love bikes. Because I realized that he had better sense of the consumer, of the film market as it were. If we pull this off, then we know that there is a new audience. I again had to work on a budget. <laughs> so I took three upcoming actors. I didn't take stars. Right. And I spent more money on the bikes than them. <laughs> I love that. That's <laughs> My name is John Abraham. How's it looking, guys? We're happy. Oh my God. Hello, Dad. I'm a motorcyclist. Yeah. Woo. All right, relax. Oh my God. He was hot before. So I should not on this. Abhishek. Had had a string of unsuccessful commercial, commercial films. films. They're not going to win any awards for this film, so don't try and be some huge actor. Fair enough. John, you don't have any songs. I said, oh. ah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized that this is actually the hook that I needed. He has no idea that he's loud and he's like a little bit not good. Not just good totally. Pressing in English specifically. <laughs> Imagine. Ideas sure. about Fix your car, bro. Push on a perform. A little naive. And I think Uday played it really sweetly and really well. And I think he. Came out as the most lovable character. Oh, I want to watch this film. Oh, guy. Ab, kam kare. How the f did Aishwarya choose a big chick and not me, bro? If right, you weren't even born. Macha. Boom happening around that time was also a sign that they're looking to Expand. get into different genres. Yeah, of course. When the trailer of Boom <laughs> first came, it was a three-minute trailer. Jesus. And we got to know that they'd seen it on repeat some 10 times. <laughs> no way. And I remember Adi called me on the mobile. He was at the Vikas Park office. He said, sit down. And I said, why? What happened? He said, congratulations. You just gave your first hit. People had just seen the movie and they were like just going crazy That's about the movie. Sick. This is what we want. Yeah, it's a very cool film, cool. it looks like. Yeah. After this film, if motorcyclists go out and rev their motorcycles, we're gonna think it's cool. We've got a hit film. Yeah. Do you see that there is ching, a ching, consistent ching. rise from year to year when it comes to the sale of sports bikes? I wanted to rob a bank after that. Hey, yeah. I could do, do a heist. heist. <laughs> I could. Me and my friends, me and my cousins. And any, anyone who bought her stand up comedy. Leave her alone. <laughs> I have nothing against that, I man. The production value, I think, went way beyond Doom One. Oh, it's Amir. Way, way beyond. Yeah, they just have the money now. Right, right. Even the stars, you know, Ritik, Aishwarya. Aishwarya. The whole thing got upscaled. Literally, dude. So we had three big hits in one year, which means my PP is bigger than yours. <laughs> you know, I could, I could handle this much what? filmmaking. I, I what confidence, right? <laughs> See, man, pure talent right there, Rani. Yeah. Absolutely. Eh? Bobby was one of the first. That's films a talented that I woman, right? There. During that era, that made small town India cool. I think it is the story that the country was dying to hear. Dying to yeah, hear. it's like everybody is seen the the small cut, the small town, the, the heart, the heart of the country. Yeah. To be fair, that is the India I'm really looking forward to visiting. Mm -hmm. I, I know there's like the touristy parts in the big cities, but I'd, I'd love to go see the small towns. I didn't even know we had a women's hockey team. Yeah, I bet. I want to do a documentary on them. So when you're researching, you're not supposed to get involved, but I did. <laughs> and oh. then I went to everyone I knew in advertising and marketing for sponsors. And that's maybe where we saw the big movement of movies but being made for female sports. And I remember I came down to the national stadium to meet the team because I'd like made, made big promises. And like two girls would, who were holding a jersey and the third one would be changing behind the jersey. They were using the jersey like a curtain and they just said, Bhaiya ko chua. And I started crying. I didn't know what to do. I was feeling, I've never felt so dejected and humiliated. Oh my Mad. God. I told him all, all the athletes I met, all the girls and all the coaches and what they face and like how they need to be famous. And it all just came out and he said, let's do it. Oh, man, just I love like this that. kid. I love it. I mean, not kid, guy. And this is that big hockey yeah, movie. Yeah, the, the film that. Chakade India. Well, check. Let's see how they say. Chakade. And then he's accused of cheating and supporting Pakistan in an Indo Pak match. There is this Indian women's hockey team which is being set up. So it was it was more like a punishment. And he initiated. What a great story! Also, hockey is surprisingly hard. No, like physical. Uh, physical. Yeah. It's a film that takes a close look 
at what really comprises India. You had these 11 players from different parts of the country. This concept of what constitutes India, this concept of nationhood is mostly the concept North of India. North India. Right? I've read that a lot, actually. Yeah. Most of the films are like North Indian culture in comparison to what the rest of the, India, the is, India like. is like. Well, hence, you see the disparity in things when you look at the different cinema industries that actually Correct. India comprises itself of. India won the T20 World Cup and this became the anthem for nice. that. Nice. <laughs> Oh, five. Oh, five. In terms of the gender discrimination or the women empowerment, yeah, I was gonna say this must have been such cinema like Chakde are the torch bearers for such changes. Nice. Unusual places that you found happening. On the street, coffee yeah, shops, parks, parks. Yeah. Yeah. It, could, it, it could be anywhere. Yeah, cast the directors yeah. are funny individuals. They, they, they just see, see it. something. Yeah. yeah. Who did she cast? Yeah, we're about to find out. Oh. Of course. Ranveer Singh. Right. Yeah, there you go. So we have another Yeah, just roll it. Roll the shit out of it. <laughs> just roll it. Yes. He's such a good actor, Ranveer. Actually, He's fat. He's so, I I, so do I. I think he's super obnoxious, he's so but good, I man. love him on screen though. So <laughs> I met this very, very interesting person, Shanu Sharma, at a party. And she actually got me my first few auditions. And she showed me some pictures. We've actually really? seen some of these clips online. I mean, in the photos, he really looked not good. And I say, what's wrong with that fire guy actually? I said, what's wrong with you? And you I was know? like, no, 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 just send him, for, send him in for a test. So I tried to get in touch with Ranveer and as usual, he was just really busy. I was like, <laughs> I haven't really done anything other than theater before. These are Told you. Yeah, it's the thing. I, I saw it. it. <laughs> I've been around theater, mother. <laughs> He's one of them. Hey, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I was able to give a good audition was because she was performing the scene oh, with nice. me. Awesome. I went back to the same office. <laughs> and I start reading with Anushka, with Habib sitting there, Mani sitting there, and it's a disaster. <sighs> but obviously, it turned out all right. <laughs> The door opens a few minutes later, boom, walks in, who I've never seen this individual, but I know that this is Aditya Chopra. He's like, look kid, you were great in your first few auditions and you've been terrible <laughs> after that. Yeah, you were down in your own head. I said, well, I was high then. Like, I have not seen an audition. Believe, I kid. saw it then and there. Yeah, in that he just moment. got caught up in that, in that, oh, I, f and I bombed like, and now I don't know so how to get out of that. Go. They go with him anyways. Oh my God. And what a decision. Yeah. He said, I decided. We're big fans of Ranveer, right? I, I love guess him. you're getting that. Awesome. <laughs> That's why I give him I think shit. He's so great. Because nobody else saw it. We love his girl. Not the writer, also, not he's the a director, theater kid, you know? The, not the co actor. Nobody. nobody we just noticed it. it really early that he, he had the theater pedigree. I, must, I noticed it there. Yeah. So Baleska instantly became very. Almost sort of attractive. Hey. So Ranveer was a risk, but I had gained enough experience to understand that you know audiences don't really care about where you come correct correct i want the best talent it doesn't matter to good me man they come. i love Currently, that if you are talented just go just to a casting director go to a casting director you'll get the opportunity if you're good is that simple? fairly simple yeah. that was not the case 20 years back now I it's just the competition is a lot higher because yeah. the, the barrier of entry is a bit lower fresh is fresh there are more people who are successful in the industry who have not been part of any lineage ever before. And I come from a very, very middle class background. We don't belong to uh, the film industry, but we love him. Right. So that's cool that Ranveer is also not part of the families. Same as Deepika, you know. When Doom happened, I was always trying to make it in as a mainstream I don't like that they're using him as the medium as like the laughing stock which is like no, I don't well think look he's the son stock. he's the son why didn't he become the next Ritik Roshan again a lot of offers came after the moon and take uh, because I was trying to get into a space which probably wasn't meant for me. yeah see but that's nothing to do with that's the fact nothing. that he was an epo to do with him I went in with the idea that everyone will love me. I didn't imagine that people might Yeah, but that's like a him me. problem. But he got the shot anyways, and he was very successful because of his contacts and everything else. Then at one point, I think he, he kind of decided on his own, like, you know, probably this is not for me because I'm, I'm not going to be able to find the kind of success I want to. I'll give you my thoughts on this after this episode. A father's always happy to see his son go ahead than him. I love Pamela, bro. Me too. Pam is great. 
he has made up his mind that I'm not going to compete anymore with the younger director. Let those boys also have nice. their chance. Nice. But I know one thing, Adi is handling the offer so well, I think I can now die with grace. Yeah, it's Aww. every father's dream, isn't it? That is. It's the way it goes, Aww. though, isn't it? Um, okay, so there, there's a couple of obviously very interesting points in that episode. Obviously, they, I like the way they approach the issue of nepotism. That was a really good way of introducing some new names, Ranbir Singh, Anushka Sharma, Bumi, telling the story of, look, we weren't, we understood the issues with nepotism. We wanted to open up the doors, wanted to be more diverse, tell different stories. Also, nepotism isn't the end or be all, which yes, of course, because you're playing the market. However, there's two issues with, when it comes to making the argument that nepotism isn't all of it. We grew up in the industry in South America, in, in Venezuela most specifically, but our parents weren't really in the industry. Um, it was just more father had a good name in town, a wealthy individual, uh, you know, you get along those sort of circles. So I guess it's like a soft version of nepotism, but we still saw the fucking, uh, what do you call it, privileges and the rewards of it. Now, were we talented kids? Like, uh, I think my sister, I think she's one of the most talented people I know. Obviously, she gets uncomfortable with whatever, but it's like, we obviously reported well on television. We knew how to work. I was good at instruments, but Leska was really good at singing. We reported well on camera. We got all the auditions. We get in. Now, there were kids in the hood, right, that couldn't eat. That, uh, you know, they lived in the, what you, what you guys, I guess from the West, people call them like, or outside of uh, South America, like the favelas, like the shanty town sort the, of thing. The, the hood. slums, yeah. The really bad slums. Um, they they could have been the best singers in the world. And we saw them sometimes in like these festivals and there's this, this, this like small town uh, competitions yeah, and yeah. gatherings. And my father would go there to look for talent. And we had other directors go there. Sometimes the casting directors go with talent and they would see us just to put things into perspective as well. It's like, you know, you might be good, but like there's some other kid that he'll never be be a star because he's broke as f and doesn't know anyone but he's a better singer than you so get to work um, and, no, and the thing is the thing is because this is the perspective that i think is a little jaded with this with the nepotism is uh, idea yeah. which i believe is not the fact that you get in because you can get in like like ranveer it ranveer did like you, you get in because you met somebody and yeah. that that's your in and in some ways, that's also like a an soft easy, version of a softer version of, of the nepotism step in friends instead of family name. Right? Correct. It's who you know, right? It's it always, always is in the industry. It always it's cliche, is but it's true. Who you know, right? And that's how a lot of opportunities come about. Yep. However, though, the people that usually don't have much or didn't grow up in this environment strive to be a little bit hungrier. Yeah, they have a they, next they, level type of they hunger. They want to make a point. They oh. want to make a stamp. And because everything that they are doing has a purpose. Oh. Uh, regardless, uh, it, it's like... It's like that phrase of uh, what is there to lose when you have nothing. Yeah, it's like, you know? like failure is not even a fucking option. It's, it's not even in the realm of a possibility because the need for that to be the only success Correct. is the driving element. Now, and this is not to take credit away from individuals like Uday, right? Like he, he obviously, very talented and actor. He gave it a very fair shot. Ton of like insecurities, it seems, because uh, he was the part, very talented, had the look. Um, yeah. Even though he may not think he does, this is typical of artists anyways, they'll have their own conundrums going on. Because, um, you know, to be that artistic, to wear your heart on your sleeve, it also exposes you to other things, insecurities, self-conundrums, you're bat battling inner demons all the time because you're so sensitive and sensible and, uh, sorry, yeah, just sensitive, not not sensible. Um, probably not very logical or <laughs> unsensible. So, not to take credit away from him because obviously, yes, he took advantage of his opportunities, just like I would, just like you would, if you had, if your father was that successful. I know it depends on the industry. The thing is, like, there's cameras and, and all of the eyes of the media are here. But and did he have to work hard? Yes. Did he have to work super hard? Yes. Did he did he have to uh, 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 get humiliated, failed auditions, put to the test under immense pressure? Probably more pressure than someone that's just coming up because his dad is just Raj Chopra and uh, his his brother, his, was, his brother was the directing the fucking film. Immense immense pressure, next level pressure. Probably pressure that crumbles the knees. Now, why didn't he make it? Not because nepotism doesn't work. He didn't make it because bro quit. Yeah. Like it's that simple. It's, it's not really that. Look, the and, criticism, and did SRK not get criticized? Yeah, uh, did Ritik Rosha not get criticized? Did all these guys not get criticized? And of course they do. Is, and this is the thing, like, I feel like when you are hungry, when you have a purpose for whatever it is you're doing, yeah. the, the opportunities of, like, I don't want to be a comedic actor. Get f***.
Do you want to put food on the table? That doesn't matter because you got bills to pay, brother. Yeah, yeah, so... Like, that doesn't matter because my little sister has to go to school and has no food in her Correct. in her school bag. But let, let's keep going. I guess now we look Less at the legacy deficit. because we have allude, alluded to his death. I used to keep getting these letters from all the big studios like Warner's. I've always wondered this, why didn't Amita make it in Hollywood? So I accepted one of their letters and I went across to Warner Brothers. He knew every detail, mm. how we make films, what are our economics, what are the commerce, what are the kind of stories we make, data the actors are, the whole system. And I came back and, you know, confided in my friend, look, I went there and this is what happened. You need to go back to your country because the Americans are coming. Yeah, they were obviously seeing a little gold mine <laughs> rip so much money. But this is the sort a of... A market that they couldn't penetrate that well. What do you think about the term Bollywood? I've never liked it. Being called Bollywood. The word Bollywood. I don't like it. Hit it. No, I don't like that word. <laughs> Bro, wearing, bro's wearing super dry drip. <laughs> so the only thing I hold against it being called Bollywood is it doesn't include the rest of Indian cinema, which is as important and even more. Bengali yes, movie. good man. It's okay. I realized then that a lot of names uh, start off as being a bit of an insult that actually stick. I mean, I didn't realize <laughs> the Impressionists. Was an insult. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It's just Indian Makes cinema, sense. mate. But I like the term Hindi mm. film industry. I think it has its own romantic okay. in Bollywood. Same as yeah. Broadway. It's not Broadway, mate. It's, it's American theater. It is, yeah. If you would say India and you travel abroad and say, hey, Bollywood, you know? And there was a gold rush. Yep. Sony Pictures came in to build, you know, it was the first time a Hollywood Shout out to our friends at Sony. actually produced a Hindi film. I remember when we had the premiere yeah. of uh, Slumdog Millionaire on the card, it was written, uh, written Anil Kapoor oh, and Fox. Fox in white everywhere. Yeah, and what a freaking hit this was. And let me be very honest with you, a lot of them approached YRF to tie up with YRF. Yeah. But you know, the problem is Adi wouldn't easily agree to that. Yeah, bet. Yeah. It's a takeover. Yeah. It is, yeah. I got a sense that this is going to happen in the film industry <laughs> as well. And if that happens, any production house, like even as reputed as ours, would eventually be working for okay. the studios. Mm. And before the studios come in, I would like to become a studio so that they don't come to buy oh, us yes, out. Uh, but they look at us as equals. Ah, uh -huh. smart. Well, f so ambitious, like, it's actually nuts. Yeah, definitely. He said, "Nee, beta, viable hai ki nahi hai. Mujhe studio bana ke Adi ko dena hai." Ah. When Yashji and Adi first told me that they were making the studio, I was, is it even economically, economically feasible to run something like this? I was not nervous. Because I was not spending money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure, let's do it. I was told by Yazji, I will make the biggest, biggest studio in the world. That's a cool, diabolical thing to say. I wasn't nervous. Wasn't I was money. like, actually, not a problem at all. I was so happy when the studio opened. I can't oh take it. 2005 is when we all. They, could have they found have a it. whole like, waterfall. Yeah, what the? <laughs> I'm sure, they could have found the uh, investors though as well. Because I was studio manager, I would play host to a lot of the kind of people that came to see it. Everyone who came to India from uh, Hollywood. That was cool to have Will Smith there three years ago, prior to him slapping people. Everyone was Acorn. Acorn. away because. Chamaka no, we took this trip. <laughs> I remember doing an interview with one uh, journalist who said, like, you know, your brother has the Midas touch. touch. And I was like, yeah, I hope it continues. Yeah, she's going to drop, isn't it? He's going to die. He's going to pass away. It wasn't so much as one moment that things started going downhill. It was more like a gradual thing. The big thing that was happening during that time, personally, was my mother's health. Oh. She was diagnosed with cancer, and that is the time that my father started taking a backseat. That is the time when my dad and I started creating our own kind of rapport together because he needed somebody to talk to. So he would sit with me and he would like tell me, like, I'm scared. Then came 2007 and we kind of started to slip. We had seen a few non-successes. Like? Was this the only run I had? Mm -hmm. And I realized I had to direct and I realized that I need to give the company like a really big successful film and probably I'll have to do it myself. Sheesh! I went away to London for about two weeks and I said, I'm gonna write. Nice. It's a story about a husband who has an arranged marriage. Uh, she wasn't happy marrying in the first place and it's his love story. He wants to win her over, he really loves her. And he creates this alternate persona to win her over. 
Come Man, on. I want to do. I want this film to do so well, but I think Me it didn't. Too. Obviously, it was going to be played by the same actor. So everybody's problem was like, how would she not recognize him? So this film will fail in its premise. May the song in this. Beautiful. Oh, I want this to do well. Now, before the film could come out, 26. On the evening of Wednesday, November 26, 2008, India's financial capital, Mumbai, came under sustained attack by 10 armed gunmen. Oh. A real-life action drama unfolded on TV screens across the world. A terrorist siege in Mumbai. What the f Its consequences will likely be felt for a very long time to come. So a lot of people actually within the company, even externally, felt that, you know, just push the film. I truly believe that there is a spiritual thing at play here. I'm gonna take this risk. Damn. And I'm not gonna change the date. Ooh. It also came from my innate sense of confidence. Oh, it breaks all records. Nothing can shake Indians. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Man, I wanna do research on that event. Yeah. F***ing hell, was that heavy? Veer Singh featuring Ranveer Singh? When my film Beit Fikri didn't do well. That was a little heartbreaking. Didn't do well. For quite some time. I think Abama Pidos. No, no, no. Is this your version of Adil Hemushakil? I'll send you two for whatever life is left. What the f? <laughs> <laughs> Let's celebrate our breakup anniversary. Uh, this is this is Adil Hemushakil. Part one. I thought India is ready for it. I thought. Uh, Good I just music think probably though. they were not ready for it. <laughs> Me. I rate Aditya a lot, man. As a professional actor, if I have to spend a hundred days on a set, I'd rather do it on a Yash Chopra set than anybody else. Nice. And actually, to be honest, he's younger than Adi as far as being on sets is concerned. Yeah, he's because he's a very live, hands-on, lively kind of man. Look at him. <laughs> he had the funniest jokes, and like really stupid one-liner jokes, slapstick. <laughs> 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 he's the typical dad, though. No, like. I love him. Yeah. I mean, half the time I, I couldn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> Yash Uncle had this tendency to speak really fast. fast. Yeah. Very fast. Breakneck speed. There were people on sets who would just turn around and... What, what are they talking about? Jab tak hai jaan. Oh, we're just taught in time, we're going back and forth. Jab tak hai jaan was actually a film which I chose over another film Adi had offered me. I said, no, if Yashji is making a film, I'll be part of it. Oh, so now I'm so, so f***ing rich, I get to choose. Oh, totally. Well, he was very rich before that, though. He would sit with the crew, he would eat together, he'd be the first person on set in the morning and then the last person to leave. I love that, I, do. I, I love, love that. Guy. We were shooting in Ladakh in really difficult conditions. He was the coolest of us all. I was like shivering to death. And we had 18-year-olds, <laughs> 19-year-olds, assistants who were falling sick. And here was this 80-year-old eight eight man. My God. Time. I was doing a shot in Kashmir. But then he came and said, Yaar, teri picture ho gayi. And, and he became very emotional. And then he kind of started crying. He said, Yaar, this could be our last shot. So he said, no, there is no more shots left of you. And I said, yeah, but we'll make the next one. I think he had made up his, his mind, mind yeah. that this will be his last outing. Fuck. But he never told anybody because he knew that everybody will try and discourage him. So when is, when is the next one? Because uh, this has been a great experience and I'd like to ex you know, do it again. Shahrukh, I think life Calculator के सामने बताई, calculation नहीं की life. जैसे हवा के झोंके से दरिया के पानी के साथ बेहतर है जान. I love this man. यार दिल कहता है. हाँ तो अब मैं जब तक जान के बाद तो फिल्म डायरेक्ट नहीं करूँगा यार. I never knew before that. I said very loudly. What? Mate, what a moment that was. We never shut up and we were quiet. He looked at me and smiled. It was Amitji's birthday. And I went to hug Yesji and he was shivering. He had fever. Yeah. He said, Yeah, you both late okay, function to be I then I went on to have dinner and all. And next evening I think he was in the hospital. I remember one night I had a dream that my father is here in this studio and he's sitting in a full black suit. And I'm there next to him and he's like, Why are you not here? And I got up in the middle of the night and I realized that something is wrong. My brother's downplaying it. And then I heard he had dengue and Adi said, like, don't come now. I don't want you to make it a big deal. And I understood, you know. They had a good life. 5.30 p.m. Uh, Yash Chopra passed away. Once we heard it, we all came down to the studio where his body was brought from the hospital. Then I cried a lot, a lot. And in the uh, crematorium, I told Sharo, I lost my father. He said, Vakil ji, you don't also, SRK's family is quite unique, right? So... Yeah, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a documentary. Why am I crying? The fact that he hadn't even seen the first pop Oh, he didn't even see the f***ing film. 
I had promised myself that I will not cry. Yeah, I love Pam. But when I saw the film and the last 15 minutes of that film, I cried and how. <laughs> <laughs> that was like his thing and he not once or twice, every day. He says that my, my ideal way to go would be to with my boots on. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. That's right. On his terms, man. What a way to go. I think he lived a complete life. Oh, I think yes. he pretty much Bro, achieved lived their life. a man can achieve in a lifetime. He's done his job. He's set us up, given us everything. He's father's he's dream. Done. And he saw his legacy was well carried. Oh, right? mate. But Aditya. I dream about him a lot. Jesus oh. Christ. And All right, bro, always relax. the same dream that I'm talking to my father in some situation or the other. We're having a great time together. We had an amazing relationship right up until the time. Oh, come on, mate. Pick up the acting the role again. I've ever had. So his first film was a big hit and his last film was a big hey! hit. Bro, he won. It's nothing to be sad about. Bro, f no, him I won. Know. It's just there's that saying, the tragedy of all age. It's not that you're old, it's that you are young. They are now looking at me to fill that void. Yeah, mm. dude. I, by nature, am very different to my father. Yes. And obviously I can't be him, it's not possible. But I'll have to work harder on myself to kind of represent Good man. Him. And I'm at least accessible yes. for at least the people who really need me. Correct. Is that the most <laughs> I keep feeling that's his way of kind of telling me that, okay, son, I'm going to make sure you kind of go out there, yeah. <laughs> develop your people's skills. So that's why he decided and to that's adopt. why he's here. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> and I'm telling him, okay, guy, I'll get there. <laughs> I think in my own journey, like a, I've never found myself opening, to though. have the amount of passion my brother and my father had. There you go. And it was not just emotionally, but also on my career front. I wanted to do something that was different. Canal Plus, he was in... Festival of okay. Kings. He did go so to Hollywood. I started uh, a production cats, company cats, out of cats, LA cats, called Wire of Entertainment. Better on Hollywood banner. And this could be your baby and you run it and you decide, you know, how to go about it. And you got very exciting. I would always be under the shadow of my father and my brother. Ah, don't worry about that, son. for me to come out of that. So here was an opportunity that, look, if I did this and whatever little bit of success I get out of it, it would be mine and I would be able to create an identity for myself Ego? by doing this. There are a lot of things that uh, I had planned. Create some kind of an international presence for YRF in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Good. Another dream of mine was to get Broadway in India. Good, Theme mate, Park you're the guy. Huge, huge dream of mine. A theme park. It's all like Disney, right? And I think YRF could do that. Ah, nice. yes, look at all the plans that you will never know. <laughs> I like, I like. I, I think love. you're the guy that could take Broadway and the West End to, to India. 100%. As well. I've always said, yeah, if there's and anybody, it has to be him. And India to Broadway and West End. So, in that way, Adi is operating in quite the same way. That this is who we are, we'll die working. And he did. Mm. And this one will too. So. Love, I Wild love Wild thing this to say. <laughs> no, but I love that type of like mentality though. I gotta say, the music direction of this, very well done. Love and all, absolutely soon, soon worthy. Very well done, very well done. So I encourage everyone to go watch the original if you haven't. The pressure everyone has. What a mate, you're perfect, mate. <laughs> they got those guys from YouTube that do mashups to edit this. <laughs> That's what it feels like, isn't it? It does. Why do these songs go so well? Fair enough. Love, fair love, enough. love, love, love. I'm this very pleased. I'm very pleased. S S I don't know how to say her name. Sriti. Yeah. I. Girl, you ate. Absolutely freaking ate. I cried. That was really emotionally, really nice. Yeah, really nice. I mean, I knew it was coming because obviously it's just the way life of course, goes. Of course, of um, course. But also, re really well paced. I think the pacing of this is probably how a lot of documentaries should be shot. I think episodic is usually the best way. Um, you can dive deeper into specific things. You can see the... You know the criticisms from the from the public be addressed in some sort of argumentative way or like uh, enough you know like uh, what their approach is and their mindset has been for example the nepotism thing i think is one of the most interesting parts also seeing the you know the ups and downs of being in filmmaking it's very much very fickle as you can obviously tell sometimes you know three years you're fucking kicking ass and then two years in a row you've had no fucking hits and now you're cooked obviously aditya has ton of big dreams uh, I, I and i do like that a lot because i've said it from the beginning i think what indian cinema or bollywood in that sense has made is what i think the west end and broadway have tried to do but have failed 
and only when multinational corporations and the big sort of studio houses in in LA in in Hollywood get involved, you get the Greatest Showman, you get High School. Well, High School Music was a pr- passion project that for, hit. by was, luck, yeah. but it was Disney, but it was also a passion project. They they basically were working with scraps. I think that era. The reason why we didn't have anything like High School Musical and Camp Rock was because it didn't know what it wanted to be. Yeah. Do we really, can we really bring theatre into the big picture? And the answer was, you fucking can't. Because Disney tried again, they did. No, and the thing is like, take it out, take it out of, of, of perhaps one specific studio, but uh, the, there aren't musicals in cinema, which uh, you know, you obviously you had. Mamma Mia, uh, Hairspray, yeah, Westlife, Hairspray, Grease. Wait, Westlife? Is it Westlife? The one where West Side Story. West Side Story. But that's a remake. You see, that's a remake of of the original. Nothing original in that sense. And, um, and again, Hairspray was original. Did it do all right when they did it in the last few years? La- West Side La- Story. La La Land. They did La La Land. Yeah, they did. Uh, the, they so have tried. They have they, tried, but there, there have been. But in terms of like, there is a continuum set, predominant studio that makes a uh, music. And also, most think. of them are not original stories. Yeah, they're just yeah. remakes of old shit, which is yeah. very common in the West at the moment. I I kind of like the fact that you could have if if there was a company, if there was a studio that that I would be excited to see a musical from would definitely be something that YRF brings to the West. Because yeah, be down. also also I would love to see stories like like DDLJ on, or something similar, a, a brand new story in theater here in the West. Because you don't get that you don't get that. You get companies that have Bollywood influences try to tell Desi stories and they're not they don't hit the same. Mm. And then you can see that you, you can see the discrepancy when you see a film of the Indian film industry in comparison to to what they're trying to put out in the West. I guess know? Wicked, right? If you do a musical and then you also translate it into a big screen. Yeah, the market's there. Both at the same time. I don't know. You come up with something innovative. Uh, anyways, uh, what an interesting documentary. I think we've expressed all of our thoughts. Let us know what you guys thought about it. I hope you enjoyed this little marathon. Uh, of course, do check out the original. Um, and aside from that, We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye. Have a great time.